It is 10.06 in Charles Moskowitz land, Boston. It is 7.06 in Mike King land, in Las Vegas, Nevada. You're listening to Money Info right here on WPSL, WPSLTV.com. And a uh, very pleasant good morning uh, to you gentlemen. Good morning. Hey, uh, Mike, I, I have a question on your commercial. Now, where, where it says that uh, uh, Princeton Research has 100 years of experience, that doesn't mean you're 100, does it? I'm kind of close. You look, like, there. you look like you're 35. I mean, that's because that's you're uh, doing You should have seen him when he was 35. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Charles. <laughs> and that's because of the tsunami. I was going to say, it's, it's, uh, it's all because of the tsunami and you're working out uh, all the yeah, time, right? Yeah, you know, I've... I, uh, right, I follow all the directions of KC, oh, so? and I stay in really good health. I take the Tsunami and the Nexus 850 every day, and um, it really gives me a, a lot of pep. Yeah, i got to talk to KC about getting some of that Nexus. That's, that sounds like that would be awesome. That's, that's, uh, hey, right Mike, what I'm happy to send you. To that's right up my alley. So that means... Counting Charles, then. Well, actually, if you bring Casey into the mix too, um, you'd have 200 years of experience. With Casey, probably only about 35 or 40. Oh boy, I was thinking I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Well, I get 45 years old by myself, so. Oh, there you go. There you a go. Market experience. Well, I, I've I've raised enough cane this morning. Well, Charles, you are. To say you're on a hot streak is uh, would be the understatement of a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, the uh, options only account was up, this is week 18, was up uh, $16,336 on a $10,000 initial investment. So the equity in that account would be 26000 and change, up 163%. And we've taken a couple of more little profits this morning. So we're right bouncing up against our full year last year performance of 171 percent so what what have you done for us lately I yeah mean, you you've done all of last year in four months that's not too bad right. wow you know if, <laughs> if, if in fact uh you know i had those profits uh, under my belt i'd probably be closing down for the rest of the year certainly for the summer you know, sell in May and go away is not a uh, common thought without having some, you know, past history to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it is funny that you mentioned that. Hey, yeah. I, you know, I uh, there's all sorts of uh, uh, wild stories going on uh, that are uh, kind of telecom related. Um, yeah. Um, what is amazing? Uh, we just went went through. Uh, uh, some upgrades down at our WSTU tower with uh, uh, AT and T and stuff, and uh, part of the uh, uh, not the 4G, but the whole LTE system, yeah, is like it's it's like it's all software that kind of does its own thing, right? Well, right. and and supposedly they are starting to do this uh, over in Europe now, and they're talking about. Um, wiping out 300,000 jobs immediately because of this, uh, because obviously the software is getting so sophisticated, you, you don't need the guys in the switching stations anymore, right? Well, yep. and they're talking about a total of 1.1 million people could lose their job because of the whole new technology, which is mind-boggling to me that, you know, that something like that could happen. Um, you know, and and this is something you guys could kick around because I know you'd have an uh, interesting time with it, where the unions are saying that the companies have a moral obligation to keep these guys on the payroll. Well, I don't know that they have a moral obligation to keep them on the payroll. It would certainly be nice if they trained them for the jobs that will be created. Exactly. From this. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's my main issue here with um, unemployment and what the numbers actually mean. Um, 
you know, when you, it's like saying, you know, take, for example, the record business. Mm-hmm. The record business was terrific, and then, you know, 12 years ago, we got Napster, and it was free sharing, and they couldn't deal with that. Right. And uh, then we got, 10 years ago, we got iTunes. Yep, on the iPod. Which yep. uh, had its anniversary, I think, yesterday or the day before. Correct. And, you know, and runs a billion downloads uh, with people paying. Now, if you're an artist, the money is different. And the money in the record industry is different in that the same people aren't making it. But the money is being made. It's just distributed a different way. It's like saying, you know, well, the record business is dead. Well, it's not dead. It has just new players. And I think that, uh, you know, these companies that are figuring out different and what they consider to be better ways and more efficient ways to operate are still going to need people. Right. They're just not trained for it yet. And, you know, we have that uh, U6 number, which is participation, and it's 50% above, um, you know, where we are in the number that everybody sees as a headline. And I think that that's a great opportunity for some other people. For example, Texas, Texas Gulf, who we've had on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Repeatedly. Yes. You know, they can make money training people for jobs that we actually don't have enough skilled workers to fulfill. And he's begging and so, for people to So, you know, your apply. point is very well taken, Greg. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is, you know, no, they don't have a moral obligation to keep people. You know, that's, again, that's my problem with earnings. You can only get so far cutting costs and not having, you know, a, a top-line number, revenues, grow that 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 to me is a very weak earning gain so uh, you know it, it'd be great if we had some more training programs and I think that that's partially why some of these uh, paid education companies um, look so attractive to people oh I University of Phoenix and stuff like that University of Phoenix yeah Capella yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and and they get a very bad knock because a lot of it is, uh, you know, government subsidized as help, um, and you know that creates again more debt and more debt for the people. But you know, it does give people the opportunity to better their ability to compete in a changing economy where their job is no longer doable. You know, remember we had the guy on with the uh, with the robots, you know, and yes. a robot for $22,000 can do $160,000 worth of, you know, of um, manufacturing. Sure. So they don't need those three guys that they're paying $60,000 each. Yeah, but, you know, you know, it's funny you mentioned the record industry. And of course, the, the, the bane of my existence are the licensing bureaus the bmi and ascap these are the people that run around and find the uh uh girl scouts for singing around a campfire and stuff right. um and, and you know they're charging of course you know uh, carol and i for 20 years have paid thousands of dollars of these people and we don't play music right. <laughs> so it's like you know it, th- that's the one part of the music industry that has not kept up and that's these Hey, by the way, you mentioned Girl Scouts. Yeah, there was an article on CNBC this morning. What? You know what the annual? You know what the annual sales of Girl Scout cookies is approaching? I can't even imagine. A billion dollars. <laughs> hey, uh, this is Gary Chella. Having two daughters that are in the Girl Scouts, the pressure that is put on these girls to sell Girl Scout cookies is amazing, and they, I know it's all going to a good cause, but. Wow. I mean, it's yeah. like a, a billion-dollar business, family. Gary. Yeah, a billion. And Gary spent half of that himself buying cookies. And, yeah. and, and by the way, that's and if I had any other relatives, it would be more. <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's not a year-long deal. No. They only do that about six and a half months a year. I don't even think it's that long, Charles. I, I think yeah. it's a matter of weeks. 
because I know uh, they always bring them in here uh, so we could talk about the Girl Scout cookie drive. And it's only about maybe a month long and, and from beginning to end, at least here. And, yeah. and, you know, and you think, wow, and it's uh, sales are just astronomical. Well, I think they have, you know, I think they have pre-ordering, and I think that they have on a website the ability to get them anytime right. you want them. Right. But even so, even if it's a full year, a billion dollars for Girl Scout cookies. I mean, what do they do with that money? Hey. Uh, the, the, and, they're, and they're over I mean, can... Can they, can they spend a billion dollars? Uh, I don't. That's a lot of money, and, they, and this is a tax exempt organization. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't even go there, right? Well, my, yeah. Uh, maybe Mike King can take the Girl Scouts public. What do you think, Michael? That's an idea. <laughs> The only uh, problem it is it's a not-for-profit. <laughs> well, that's all right. It's a public not-for-profit. You know, it's funny. You fellows are mentioning not-for-profit. I, I, I brought this up. I actually brought this once up on CNBC, and I got a fair amount of, oh, my God, I can't believe he just, you know, uh, said something about the Holy Grail. I mentioned that one of the uh, Kennedy family members runs an organization, a not-for-profit, called the um, the river keepers. Oh and yeah. They raise all kinds of money to keep the Long Island Sound clean. Yeah. However, interestingly enough, he pays himself three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in salary. When questioned why his salary was so high, he said, and I quote, "A not for profit does not mean." that you cannot pay salaries. It simply states that its intended goal is not to earn a profit. Right? <laughs> so whatever he, so, I mean, that's very common. That's very common. I mean, you know, what do you think that the guys who run uh, St. Jude, the hospital deal, make? I know, I mean, and, and the rationale is pretty simple. I mean, you still want top people running your organization right that's that and you have sense. to pay top people exactly yeah but yeah. but a lot of people don't understand a lot of the public doesn't understand that nonprofit or not for profit businesses you know still can pay people i mean right. everybody sure. doesn't sure. donate their time hey guy, you know, they, guys what about uh, speaking of not for profit uh pfizer announced <laughs> yeah uh, they they're they're slipping a little bit here and uh, not by much i mean they they're a little shy of uh, uh, 54 cents a share, uh, missing the estimates. Uh, they had a sales sales number of, and this thing just blows me away, 13.5 billion, which came just a hair short, 13.9 billion, um, uh, you know, and and the shares slid two percent. Right. It's like you got to be kidding. They still uh, uh, took in. Uh, Thirteen and a half billion dollars. That's mind-boggling to me. Amazing amount of money. Yeah, it is. Well, guys, what do you think? Uh, I, I, but the, the top line was down nine point three percent. That's that's a discouraging number in a growing economy. Right, and, and also you have to remember, Greg, that um, one of the things that holds up a lot of stocks currently. Um, is the fact that nobody has any place that they can go to have any real earnings and uh, re any real, when I say earnings, I mean, you know, any real income off, for example, the safer investments like the bonds and such. Um, now they go to dividend stocks and that holds Pfizer up because mm -hmm. they still pay, uh, you know, a reasonable dividend. And I think a lot of people look at, you know, if you told a lot of people that Pfizer was losing money, you know, or had 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 declining sales, they'd say, oh, that's ridiculous. You know, I take three of their drugs. And, you know, what they don't factor into that is the incredible expense that goes into um, developing R&D yeah. and testing and licensing in, in, in order to get a drug that does a billion or $2 billion a year. Well, the question I have, Charles is you know we've talked about it with the skin visible folks uh right do they have any drugs that are going generic that could really hurt their bottom line i mean that's 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 going to be uh intriguing to look at down the line to see uh 
you know, yeah. Pfizer, if Pfizer's going to be running into that. Well, Michael, uh, what about your home prices out, out west? Are they, uh, you know, Case Shiller, uh, pretty positive there, uh, climbing 0.3% uh, in February. Yes, they're growing steadily, steadily. It's probably the strongest single sector in the economy is the housing sector. Uh, prices are consistently getting better. Uh, there's a, a shortage, actually. Um, there's only like a, a three and a half month supply of homes on the market, um, which uh, in, in a time like this, they would expect more distressed homes to come on the market, and they haven't been. Mm -hmm. So the, the, uh, the market is uh, getting much better, the housing market. Gary, what about Connecticut? Well, I can only speak for Greenwich. It's flat. There's some talk about it going, maybe hit the bottom and bouncing along. I don't share everyone's optimism. I think the only reason home prices are showing any increase is that they went so low and that investors are simply taking advantage of, of cheap money and saying, well, let me go you know, buy an investment home. I, it's worth a shot in Nevada or Florida or a community that's been hard hit. I think, though, if the average American public that wants to sell a house to upgrade or what have you, if they start thinking that the market is better, they're going to start putting their homes for sale, and then you're going to have a glut of homes on the market. You'll have interest rates going higher in a few years. I personally, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's going to get any better. But that's just I'm being negative on it. I just don't see it. Yeah, Charles. You know, there's also a, there's also a pretty big move here mm -hmm. for people who are instead of losing their homes and having them hit the market or letting people stay in their homes and paying the equivalent of rent in order for those homes to not be literally uh, foreclosed on because, uh, you know, the banks don't want to really be in the housing business. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not the winter where they have to heat and maintain them, uh, but it is the summer where they have to maintain the landscaping and, you know, other normal things like roofing and et cetera. And so they're letting people stay. And I think the fact that, uh, you know, they're deriving some income for it keeps those houses off the market. So I kind of agree with Gary. I think there's going to be another, you know, down wave. I don't expect it to be anything like, you know, what has happened in the past. But, you know, supply will come onto the market. Yeah. And eventually it has to, but... Yeah, and and you know down here, guys, uh, you know you hear a lot of real estate folks saying, you know, it's it's just absolutely red hot now, but <laughs> the gigantic but there is that banks are holding on to a ton of properties that they're about ready to let go of, and uh, you know hopefully it's not going to spiral us down like it uh, it did before, but uh, you know I think that's the uh, caveat that. Uh, uh, I mean, you, ha you have to look, especially down there, Greg. You look at the Miami market, um, and we'll say that's everything from West Palm down to Miami. Right. Um, you know, you had people, foreign money coming in and, uh, you know, buying a floor of condos right. for whatever it cost because, and we've discussed this many times before, it's a way of getting their money out and getting something for it in an economy where, you know, things are slow or could be dramatically depreciated through, you know, dramatically higher tax rates or inflation. And, uh, you know, they bought, uh, they bought a floor of 10 apartments for $1.4 million apiece, figuring that they were going to be able to flip them and the market collapsed, and I mean, I have a friend in Aventura who is living in a $1.7 million condo and paying $2,200 a month. Oh. I guess that that $2,200 a month doesn't even cover the maintenance. I'll bet. So yeah. those type of supply issues are also, you know, on the back burner for now. But you can be sure when those guys start to see, you know, a 1.3 or a 1.4 bid on those apartments, on those condos, they're going to come back onto the market, too. Wow. Yeah, that's... that's I, don't know, I don't know how active they still are, but BlackRock just came into the, the 
community that I live in, and and they had a, a range of I, I don't know what it was, three hundred to eight hundred thousand, but they bought everything. Right. They bought every single house that was on the market. Wow. Well, in case they buy that to, is that to rent, or they bought them to flip, or you know what the the um, the broker told me about the transaction, um, but I have no idea what their intention is to do with them. I don't know if they're if they're holding them, if they're renting them. I, I just don't know. Casey, I was just surprised that they came in and bought everything that they could. Wow, Casey, are you in? Colbert, Kravis, and Roberts is doing the same thing. Really, they are is very active in just buying all the homes they can get. Yeah. That's Which, by the way, brings up another issue, <laughs> and that is that the outlook for the private equity deals, Fortress, KKR, both, you know, and BlackRock, all public companies that you can participate in, you know, over the long term, those deals are, are getting a lot of attention now, too. Mm, interesting. Casey, are you in uh, Tampa or St. Pete? Which side of the bridge? I am in Tampa. I'm in uh, North Tampa. So you're on the you're on the young side of the uh, bridge then. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, right. no, I'm being no, I being very. Does blunt. that mean if you drive over the bridge at 43, you know, you get to the other end, all of a sudden you're 57? No, you're 87. Uh, the average age goes from 30 to 90 within about uh, 10 minutes. You know, and, and that's that was the objection that uh, Peter O'Malley had when they started talking about the Tampa Bay Rays um, going to the other side of the bridge. And, and it's dramatic difference when you start looking at the demographics between Tampa, say where the Tampa Bay Bucks are located, versus St. Pete, where they're located. And uh, that's, it, it's totally different. And which is why it will never go in St. Pete. I mean, it, if it was over in Tampa, they would be doing very well because it's a young town. And, and, and you know, they can afford to be out after 7 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm and, sorry. And they don't eat at 4.15. But that's right. That's right. The early bird specials. Uh, hey, Mike, a quick question. What did you think of the numbers this morning? We had crummy PMI numbers. And we had very positive uh, sentiment numbers. And the, um, you can see the, the wage increase was only um, three tenths of a percent. They were expecting five tenths of a percent. So it's showing wages are low. So uh, the opportunity is there. The, uh, the opportunity for better markets with uh, lower wages and easy money. Um, um, <coughs> easy to borrow money right now and with bonds are surging you know in the market letter on april 15th we published the seasonal in the cycle section at the bottom of the letter there's a cycle section and it discussed how bonds start moving at the end of april and have a seasonal strength through the summer and it's like 71 percent going back and it's been Unbelievably accurate. And just uh, a couple days ago, they, the bonds went above their 200-day uh, moving average. And all, look at all, look at the 50-day and the uh, shorter-term 13-day moving averages. They're all pointing skyward. So uh, bonds are very strong, and America's financing its debt. I mean, people are buying those bonds all over the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, people. I mean, the 10-year the 10-year is solidly below 170. I mean, when we were trading the TBT, it was running up into the, you know, almost 2% to 2.1. People don't really have a clear understanding of how extreme a 30 basis point move in the bonds actually is. Hey, guys, uh, uh, we uh, have a caller uh, from uh, New York City. New York City. Uh, and his name is uh, Stephen uh, Pollock. And, uh, you know, uh, Stephen, you, we've got a heck of a brain trust here. Let's see. Uh, Mike King in Las Vegas. We've got Gary in Connecticut. Charles in Boston. And, of course, uh, our lovely Tsunami Striker over in uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, go for it, Gary. What's your question? Hello, Gary. Steve Pollock. Or Steve. Steve, I'm sorry. Pardon me? Steve, go ahead. I'm in New York City. Yes, uh, right. Don Jackler told me I should listen to the conference call this morning. I was with Don, 
and uh, hey, Don, Don he said that the conference call is going to start at, uh, at 10.35. You're a little early. Okay. At, uh, Just hang on. Don yep. will be on in about four minutes. Okay. There, there, <laughs> there you go, uh, uh, Steve. Uh, uh, if you want to listen, you can listen on the web. It's WPSLTV. Dot com and uh, that's that's how you can do it there and uh, let's see here there we go okay now uh, uh, Steve you can uh, listen on the web at uh, WPSLTV.com now and now welcome with Don Jackler uh, Steve Pollock had called a little bit early but I hope he's still listening and Don Jackler is going <laughs> to give us a little report about iSign Media uh, which is ISDSF, ISD.V, in Canada. So, Don, tell us a little bit about iSign Media. Okay, Michael. Uh, iSign is a multi-platform, location-based messaging solution that utilizes Bluetooth, mobile, Wi-Fi, and location-aware technologies to deliver permission-based <coughs> excuse me, permission-based consumer messaging in an innovative and cost-effective way to engage shoppers at the point of sale. Okay? Now, what does that mean? Um, recently, we've installed approximately 300 smart antennas, uh, two Marathon Oil. They own approximately 7,000 uh, convenience stores in the United States, and they sell gas within each convenience store. Uh, we put a coupon together for them to offer their clients or potential clients uh, 10 cents off a gallon per gallon. So when they the people go into the convenience store to buy milk, juice, coffee, whatever, their phone is going to ring, and it's going to say, uh, Hi, you're at the Marathon Convenience Stores, and we'd like to offer you $0.10 cents off per gallon per gas. They must give us, they must click yes in order for, yeah, for them to get the coupon. When they do that, all they have to do is show the cashier the coupon, and let's say hypothetically uh, they were getting 20 gallons of gas, okay? That's a significant savings for them. So what has happened in the last couple of months since we've started this program with Marathon, uh, they've had approximately up to 30% return uh, on these coupons and their revenues are going up. Okay? We're planning a rollout for all of their 7,000 stores, but you know, it takes time. So, how many uh, units do you have out there now in the, uh, with uh, Marathon? Approximately 300. Wow. And so we're installing every day. Yeah, you got to be. Wow, that's amazing. And so the consumer. What does the consumer do? Uh, to show their cell phone to the that cashier? Is it's a paperless transaction. And so on you, the cell phone, it shows a coupon. That is correct. So when the customer is paying for his milk and his juice and his coffee, uh, he, he's already taken 20 gallons of gas, and he comes into the store to pay the bill. He shows the coupon on his cell phone, and he gets uh, ten cents off a gallon. Wow! So that could work for KC in a health food store. There you go. That to get a discount on any, Konami. In fact, uh, there are other convenience stores out there, uh, like Marathon, that own convenience stores. I'm not at liberty to mention any names, but there is a. Uh, many, many other oil companies that own convenient stores. And they have, since they found out about what we're doing with Marathon, they've all inquired about 
uh, putting and installing our uh, smart antenna. By the way, we have proprietary technology. We have patent-pending technology worldwide. Nobody in the world has that except iSign Media. That's awesome. And, and Don, how do you how do you get permission from the uh, individuals who have their cell phones to address those cell phones? Well, the mi okay, let's go back again because evidently I didn't uh, explain it correctly. When you go into marathon uh, convenience stores, your phone is going to ring. And it's could say, Everybody's Hi. phone. Everybody's phone will will ring. So this is there's a hundred people in the store, you a hundred people are gonna have that same message from Marathon Oil. It's wow. gonna say, Hi guys, you're at Marathon Oil's convenience store. Would you like to get ten cents off a gallon? Now tell me, do you know anybody who doesn't want to save ten cents a gallon? Sure. And, and and it's all GPS based then, right? No, it's not GPS based. It's it's uh, we we broadcast through our antennas, not GPS. No. Okay, so how okay how do you, how does how does it sense the cell phone then? Well, when you use our antenna, it picks up all signals on Bluetooth on oh, okay. smartphones. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Now I get it. Yep. Etc. Yeah. yeah. Okay. God, so how do you wild. avoid the do not call list? If I'm on the do not call list and you call me, you'd be in violation of that. Would no, that? no, it wouldn't be for one reason. You're in the store. <laughs> on the on the phone call, it says if you would like to save ten cents a gallon, uh, you have to press yes, and if you don't want the ten cents, press no. So, it's. This is not spam. This is not anything other than permission-based technology that we've developed. Well, you may want to check with the Department of Agriculture, who, who does monitor that in Florida, because we have been very, very involved with it. And if there's a connection made and it's not a business line and they're on the do not call list, you are in violation of it. Yeah, Don, uh, Casey is well aware of that, owning a nutrition uh, supplement company over in Tampa Bay. So that may be something that, uh, uh, well, you know, that's, Casey, that's something that I didn't even think about, that the states have their own rules as well in all of this. Well, yeah, ironically, it's through the Department of Agriculture. I don't know how they got they got charged with it, but in Florida, they're the ones that, that manage it. Yeah. yeah well, well I'm, I'll tell you again, this is an opt-in uh, uh, advertisement or coupon, okay? So in order for you to get that coupon, you have to agree. So this is not a spam. This is not advertising other than uh, an opt-in, permissionable. The minute you opt-in, that means you have allowed us to send you that coupon. Yeah, so but, is, but, but, the, but uh, while it may be within, and, and uh, you know, I have no feeling about it one way or the other, but uh, I think We've done our homework. We, in fact, we have a, uh, we have an office in Tampa, and we have, we work with many cities within Florida that are using our antennas right now. Hmm. Now, uh, and while, you, while, you know, this is, while it where is that be, office? It's in That's Tampa. Casey, go find it. What's the name of that office? I sign media. Terrific, because wouldn't it be nice to get those antennas for health food stores that can give an opportunity for tsunami? Michael, well, let me tell you what we're doing with with cities in Florida. The uh, uh, the the cities themselves and the Better Business Bureau have gotten together with I sign because they're trying to help the small retailer, and we have put up many, many of our smart antennas in certain cities in Florida. And I'm telling you, uh, I will send you uh, all the information of which cities we're in, uh, and you'll be very happy to see where we are and what we're doing 
to try to build, help the small business owners. That's interesting. How do you get your opt-ins? You have to click. Uh, you want you want the coupon. That then you then the individual has opted into the program. Okay, if so you uh, so you had to use through uh, display ads, and then I would click. I'd enter in my my phone number. Well, let's say you went into Marathon Oil today, and your phone would ring. It would say hi, good morning, whatever it would say. But it would say that if you would, if you want ten cents off a gallon in our convenience store, press yes. If you don't, press no. So if you press no, you would not get the coupon. You would not opt into the program. That means you didn't give us permission to send you that coupon. So Don, well, how did I give you permission, permission to call me in the first place? Right. Yeah, see, I think that it's an issue not so much of the legality side of it. I'm looking at it as an issue from the annoyance side of it, where people don't necessarily want to be addressed, period. If I did so not if somebody you sent me an me. email, if somebody sent me a message, and I could save 10 cents a gallon... And I'm, it, it's called proximity retail marketing. You're right in the store. You're right there. You don't have to go. But again, anywhere. I haven't given you. I haven't given you permission to contact me in the first place. I understand that you're giving me an offer. I'm trying to figure out how I opted in to receive the opportunity for the offer. It's an interesting question, Casey. Yeah, okay. Do, Don. So you find out then. It, Don, if you're at the pump. Right, and just say oh, I I oh, usually uh, use a credit card or whatever at the pump. Is this offer still going to be uh, available to me, or do you actually have to go into the convenience store? Well, you're at the pump already. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, normally if, if when you drive in when you drive into Marathon, yeah, okay, uh, your phone is going to ring within 300 feet. I got gotcha. you. Okay, the <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, okay, so what do you do about the little placard on every single gas pump everywhere in the United the States? Do not use your cell phone. You <laughs> not to use your cell phone. You may blow up, right, yes. Right, exactly. Which I can't imagine is actually accurate, but hey. No, it's you know, true. It's, 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 it's true. It's the electronics. Hey, it could right. set off a gas pump. Yeah, yeah. That's, Apparently, for well, plane you know, every there are, on an airplane that's going to crash that also. Well, yeah, right. That's a whole different story in their case. <laughs> well, no, but uh, you can see you can see the unintended consequences here relative to, you know, the fact that while you may be within the letter of the law, um, there's that annoyance factor, and if that builds substantially, then you know, there's an issue. And with states' rights being so dramatically available to people, yeah. you know, I mean, it's not like you have to call your, you know, here in, in Boston, it's not like I have to call, uh, you know, whoever is uh, Elizabeth Warren um, at the federal level. I, I mean, you know, right here in Boston, we have the state legislature, and they push all kinds of things through that you just can't even begin to. Imagine the oh yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you something. With uh, uh, you know, uh, the stock market is hitting new highs every day. Uh, they talk about uh, less unemployment. They talk about much more money. There's no inflation. These are all lies that the government is telling you. The middle class people are suffering here immensely. So when they can get a ten cents off a gallon, and save two three dollars, where they could buy food with it, they could do other things with it. This is a very powerful mechanism that we have, and uh, it's not just in convenience stores. It could be for hamburger chains. It could be for many other industries. And and Don, I, this is Charles again. I readily agree with you. Uh, the problem is. That. You're always talking about problems. I'm telling you, <laughs> if you have a problem, you shouldn't be on this conversation. Uh, I'm looking 
uh, at we're helping people. We're right. assisting people for saving money. Yeah. And and the beauty part of our technology, it's uh, we have real time data. We're working with a, a small university in Texas called Baylor University. Hardly small. <laughs> That's a pretty large and, school there, Don. And Baylor came to us because we are the only company in the world that has real time data. When you go to an advertising agency to sign up with them, they cannot give you any real-time data. They have fluffed their data for many years. That's the reason why Baylor came to us, because they sell data to major Fortune 500 companies that iSign is involved with. That's how they got to us. So uh, we must be doing something right. Wow. Can you get them to work with the radio and television industry? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, I don't know. That's possible. <laughs> it's, it, it's an amazing concept, Don. Uh, you know, it's... Um, no, it isn't a concept anymore. Well, it's no, reality. it's yeah, it's reality now, uh, what you've got going there with Marathon. There was a concept a couple of years ago, and now... Uh, you'll be seeing in the next couple of weeks some very interesting announcements with major Fortune 500 companies, I believe. Interesting stuff. Casey, uh, any, uh, Gary, uh, anybody have any other questions for Don? Well, it would be very interesting. Casey Mike? can certainly go to the office there in Tampa and um, see what the rules are. Well, if he would, if he would send me his contact information i will have the people in tampa get in touch with him michael okay kc how do they get in touch with you oh, I'll, I'll give it to him offline yeah okay. good idea that's uh, that's great and uh uh we're working right now we're working with some major fast food companies probably one of the largest hamburger companies in the world and uh, you know, uh, uh, companies today are trying to find an effective and cost-effective way how to bring new clients into buy their goods. You take companies like Burger King and McDonald's and Wendy's. Uh, in this in this day and age. They've got to constantly find new clients and new innovative technology to bring clients in at an affordable price. And iSign has a truly affordable mechanism for that. For 3 to $5 a day, we will install the technology to bring people into your store. Uh, they don't have to spend tens of millions of dollars a month on television uh, or any other media. We will help them bring the clients in. Wait a minute. they got to keep spending on radio. Come on, Don. Well, absolutely. <laughs> We're only talking about television. <laughs> yeah. Radio, Wait a minute. radio is a great media. We're getting into television. We're getting into web TV. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But... Yeah, it's an amazing, uh, amazing thought, and good luck with Marathon, and uh, keep us informed, okay? Thank you for having me on. All right, show. all right, thank you. thank you. Thank I you. I sign media, and uh, they've got a deal with uh, Marathon, and uh, it's, it's expanding uh, by the day. Well, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> what, what, what I was thinking of, Casey, you, you were talking about the opting in. Um, is can you imagine a shopping center and say maybe four or five businesses all have the same thing? Right. <laughs> You're just walking the level, by the level and all of, of a sudden having your phone <laughs> chirping at you all the time. The, the level <laughs> of annoyance is dramatic. Yeah, that uh, would make me violent. That is going yeah. to that's and, a, and, you know and that's going to be a question. While I understand Don's argument about the um, middle class. And how badly they're hurting, and and frankly, I see it, I feel it. Yep. 
you know, and, and so I fully agree with him there. The problem is that the middle class is not the group that goes to their state legislator and says, you've got to put a stop to this because this is just, you know, this is an infringement on my um, privacy. I don't want them calling my number. Uh, you know, there are also people who have, who don't have a contract phone. They have a pay-as-you-go phone where they spend money to buy service that gets used up because they're getting unwanted phone calls. Ooh, I never thought because about those that. People, yeah. those people Data pay costs. for every phone call. Yes. And they have a minimum charge. You know, it's I'd like, like if they're spending something, 30, I'd like to say something to that effect. Okay. Number one, this is not a... These, these phone calls come from an antenna. It's not from, it's not from a telephone company. So there's no charge for these phone calls. Okay, Even so, on the receiving end. So there's no data. Zero. There's no data charges from Verizon or whomever. No, because we send it from our smart antennas. Huh. Oh, so okay. there is no charge whatsoever. Well, that's good. Interesting. Yeah. But I agree with you, Casey. <laughs> I mean, I like the idea, and conceptually it's terrific, and I can see where it works, but I can also see that there is, you know, some unintended stuff that, you know, can... Did you wake up really on the wrong side of the bed today? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not negative. at all. Not at all. And and I don't know. I don't know that that would... negative things here, and... Uh, uh, I, you know, like I said, if somebody was offering me ten cents a gallon off, uh, uh, I would jump at that uh, at that coupon. Yeah, there's me nobody personally. more than me that wants to drive into a, a convenience store and, and have somebody offer me a discount. I absolutely buy in. I, I just I just need the smart antenna to know which offers I want, and which ones I don't want. That's what we need oh, to work on. <laughs> yeah, that kind of but it. <laughs> That kind of um, that kind of borders on the same thing that we talked to with Medbox, where the oh pharmacy yeah. has your um, your history because you use a discounting card, and yeah, we're not you know when you walk in to do with that. I I we're understand that. I'm just saying when you walk into the pharmacy, uh, and they have your history, they can say to you. Gee, you haven't bought, you know, you usually buy fusion razors. You haven't bought any. Are you sure you don't need some? Is, uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of interesting, too. You're right, Casey. You know, qualification of which offers you're interested in is, you know, obviously a next step. Mm -hmm. yeah, Don, I'm not negative, I, I would love Don, I'm not negative about it at all. I, I like the well. idea. Oh, it's, great. It's wow. Just, Could you imagine if you didn't like the idea? It would have been amazing. Well, you know, I think that, I think that you know, if you were to follow my trading using the letter and the text service, you would see that I tend to be very risk adverse because the upside okay. always, the upside down always takes care of itself. Absolutely. It's looking for, it's looking for what could be a complication that, makes me shy away from a trade sometimes. And, uh, you know, uh, it has nothing to do with your antenna or your company. It's just, you know, I think that people need to be more aware of unintended consequences than we tend to be. There you go. Well, we've got about five. Absolutely. It's amazing. We've flown through the show. Just uh, one quick uh, mention, uh, uh, Charles, up your way and, uh, uh, well, actually just south of you and uh, Hartford. This is uh, right next door to Gary. Well, actually, Gary does not even recognize Hartford as sure, being, right. being in Connecticut. And rightly so. And rightly so. It's a dump. But that's a whole day. It's a capital. But it's still a dump. Uh, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... I never did well, like that. My tax dollars are wasted. Yeah, see, that's yeah. It. I, I, you know, I basically painted Connecticut with a real broad brush, having worked in Bristol. But uh, anyway, I nah, shouldn't even go there. But anyway, Aetna Insurance, guys, uh, is uh, uh, reporting earnings that uh, top the analyst estimate and raise the full year forecast because of Medicare and Medicaid membership 
boosted premiums. Kind of interesting there. So, and, by, and by the way, at the same time, the insurance companies have gotten a big boost from the government on what they're willing to pay. Yeah, that's right. And so they're they're in a very sweet spot here. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> they really are. Uh, you know, con contrary to you know some of the uh, other stuff that was going on. Uh, uh, well, we've only got uh, about uh, three and a half minutes. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, what's what's hot this uh, coming week? Well, it looks like ENZ, Enzo Biochem, is about to break out on the upside. Ooh. It's been a long time coming. Uh, the stock has not fared nearly as well as the fundamentals would lead one to believe is possible. With the awards they've won in court, they have... 50 or 60 extra million dollars. Wow. Uh, and the, uh, you know, it would take just terrible management not to be able to make good use of that, um, which may be possible in Enzo's case, but ENZ looks like it is about to, to break out. Yeah, and we, in fact, own it in the big account. Oh, okay, Charles. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. I mean, we paid a little more than this, but, uh, you know, we have been profitable, and we are now slightly unprofitable, but the chart does look great, and fundamentally, uh, as Mike says, uh, you know, there's a bunch of unrecognized um, uh, equity in the company based on these, uh, based on these uh, awards. Mm -hmm. Casey, uh, what's up with you? Oh, man, I'm, I'm loving uh, GNC just... Uh, reported earnings recently and you know they've got their their foot in the in the hot water with um with dmaa and the fda they the nbc news um did a story on dmaa and and asked gnc you know why are you selling this and finally gnc on their conference call on the analyst conference call said okay we're, we're still not agreeing that, that it's dangerous, even though the FDA has ordered it to be pulled from shelves. Oh, man. And, has, uh, and, and has, uh, they have 14 class action lawsuits. They say, well, we just, we're going to sell through what we have, so we'll continue to poison our customers, but we just won't order any more of it. Yeah, I saw something on the news last night, too, Casey, about some, some uh, FDA deal where they were looking at the negative effect of increased caffeine from a lot of the uh, oh, chewing gums, the drinks. <laughs> Why oh, they're putting caffeine gums, in everything. They, they have a caffeine waffle now. Oh, good. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Caffeine is good for you. Caffeine increases alertness, cognitive processing, but too much of it is not. And and if you're if you're starting to get caffeine from your gum and your waffles, you may be taking. <laughs> just yeah. yeah, it may it may just be a little much. Well, Charles, we can. Uh, See you several times a day on your uh, texting service. The numbers right. on that? Uh, yeah, you text the word updates, U P D A T E S, to 69302. And the uh, options only account, which utilizes that, is up 163% year to date as of Friday and a couple of more percent for this week's activities also. Wow, and check out. Before we start charging by the text. Yep. You really ought to try it out. Yep, yeah, give it, give it a shot because sooner or later, uh, and it's going to be very, uh, much sooner. <laughs> it, it's going to be a pay, uh, pay as you go. But uh, when you're up 160 uh, percent, it's worth it, you know. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie Cooking Show, guys. Mm -hmm.